a ghost of Christmas past. Claire shut her eyes and counted to ten, then added another ten on, just to be sure. Then she opened them again and looked at the man sitting across the cafe. She'd not been mistaken. It was a ghost of Christmas past, all right. Her stomach flipped, her heart skipped a beat. There was desire in the pit of her stomach. But her brain stayed strong, her eyes filled with hate, even if her heart was letting love leak in at an alarming rate as she sat there staring. It must have been three, no, four years since she'd last seen him. 19th of December 2010. She remembered the passion in his kiss as he'd said goodbye, the smile on his lips as he'd closed the door, and then the tears she'd cried when he never came back. I need to catch that train, he'd said as he reluctantly dragged himself from her body and got dressed. As soon as possible, he'd answered when she'd asked when they would see each other again. Everything was so normal. But then, nothing. She was used to long periods of nothing. Husbands and fathers of three-year-olds often couldn't get to the phone to send a message. That was the price she had to pay for being the other woman to the man of her dreams. But he was worth it. This period of nothingness, though, went on and on. And when one of her friends asked her if she'd seen the story about the disappearing train passenger, she knew without looking it was Mike. A cursory search of the internet confirmed that the devoted father of three and loving husband Mike Lewis had disappeared into thin air on a train journey from London to Cardiff. But now he was back, sitting there drinking latte like he'd always done, with a trademark milk moustache. A little older, maybe, perhaps a little greyer, certainly fatter, but still easily lovable. She tried to banish those thoughts from her mind. This was a man who'd betrayed her, vanished without trace, left her clueless, loveless and heartbroken. She put her, her iPad into her bag and started to put her coat on. But it was too late. He was coming over, a sheepish look on his face like he'd come too soon or broken a plate. Not like he'd broken her heart. Claire, he said. That voice, that smile, her knees went weak as her memory reflexed. It's me, he said. That cute smile that she'd fallen for on his face. Mike. I don't know any Mike, she said, turning and walking away. A proud tear leaking from her eye.